morning, good morning. I just look the same every morning, don't I? <laughs> I do change my clothes sometimes, you know, just in case you didn't know that. Just to let you know. So what are you grateful for this morning? Do you know what I'm really grateful for? Like, I know that I've told you all about this greens balance that Arbonne do, and it's 37 different vegetables, but here's the thing. It's become so flipping popular, it ran out. Now stop buying it, people. <laughs> stop buying it. It's mine, all mine. Yeah, so that's how I start my morning. Oh, 37 different vegetables in one little scoop. Boom, done. Can't get that in your supermarket, can you? But there you go. Well, you can, but it'll cost you quite a bit of money. But it doesn't cost me that much. So, anyway, I was listening to Bob last night. So, we have our little question and answer sessions. And wow, like you just don't want to miss any conversation with that man. And there's lots of things that if you think, oh, I know that, I don't need to listen. Oh, I nearly did it. I nearly actually thought, Oh, sure, there's nothing more. And I could hear myself and I'm like, what the heck do I know? Oh my goodness, what the heck do I know? Remember, if you say you know everything, yeah, you stop. The world's just turned around 360 degrees. You've gone backwards. Remember that. And that's more of a message for me to keep telling me that. So remember, I've been talking to you about this book here. This one. Did you see that properly? There you go, get it right. The boy, the mole, the fox and the horse. And they keep sticking with me. I just open them just to hear little things. Um, now one of the things Bob was talking about yesterday was about how we use the law of relativity against ourselves. So the law of relativity is, is that, you know, we are all looking at things relative. So what I think is small, you might think is big. What I think is good, you might think is bad. Yeah, so it's all relative to the person who's looking at it. So that's why you love one person and somebody else might think, no way, it's all relative. Yeah, so your relativity is something different to somebody else's. Stop trying to compare things. But here's the thing that really intrigued me. So whenever we're doing our personal development, whenever we're trying to grow, whenever we're trying to be better, and actually all we need to do is stop telling the stories, the crap stories to ourselves. You don't have to be better. You're just perfect the way you are, in case you didn't know. Is that, so say there's like the, the top, top people in PGI, so Dr. Gallagher Institute to the, that I'm, you know, working with. And then we think, oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And he says, you know, we're using the law of relativity against ourselves. Have a look what you've done. Have a look and compare yourself with, with, with other people. If you're going to compare yourself at all, then just compare yourself with the people that maybe you'll be talking to and think about how far you've come and use the law of relativity that way. So instead of always looking up at other people and think that you're not as good as them, maybe look at other people and just go, wow, look how far I've come. Not that you're better or anything like that, but just see the difference in the journey that you've done as you've come along. Wow. You know, so say you, that there isn't anything in your life, but say that you can, you know, look at somebody who's homeless and you go, oh my goodness, how blessed am I? How blessed am I to have a home? Yeah? Can you do that rather than thinking that I'm not good enough? Just to think, how blessed am I? And that's a good way to use the law of relativity with ourselves instead of against ourselves. And that's just one way of how we use the laws. Yeah, so if you have a look at the, the link up there, you know, I talk about some of the laws in the webinar. And when you really understand the laws of the universe and stop banging up against them and using them against yourself, life becomes a little bit more easy. Yeah. So just on that note, on this book, this is why I was showing you, it says, so this is the picture here. So sweet, this book, it really is. It says, I have such a long way to go, sighed the boy. And he says, yes, but look how far you've come, said the horse. Wow. You know, in your life, I don't know if you're trying to do something, if you're trying to make something work, if you're 
trying to be better, do better, have more, do more, be more, have more. And you can, but you don't have to work that hard at it. But I want you to say to yourself, look, you haven't come this far just to come this far, did you? Don't just stop now. Although it's not actually a bad idea to say that, to use that against yourself, to use that for yourself. You know, whenever you're just pushing and pushing and pushing and go, that's it, I can't take any more, can't take any more, I'm done. I'm like, I'm flipping done. Yeah, I've had enough. That's it, I give up. Do you know, at that moment, you actually feel a resolve that just goes, hang on a minute, hell no, I didn't come this far to come this far. Try it. If you're fed up at the moment and you've had enough, just go, you know what, give up. Give up. It's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Just give up. And you feel this resolve inside yourself that goes, I didn't come this far to come this far. But just give yourself a break. Yeah? Give yourself a break. You're flipping awesome. Yeah? And when you can just chill a bit more, more things happen for you. You see, it's that pushing, the pushing, the pushing, yeah? So there's four different levels of view in the world. One is things are happening to me. Well, then you're always going to be a victim. So make excuses or get results. Like seriously, whenever I ask people questions and say even if I ask somebody, you know, well, how much are you earning right now? Because it's all relative. I'm talking about paradigms and where we want to be. And they'll say, and they'll give me all this story as to why they're earning a certain amount. I didn't ask for the story. I just asked for the amount. Do you see the justification that you did before that, before you even tell me how much you earn? Do you, how, what do you do that? What else do you do that in? Yeah, that's where you are, literally where you're saying, well, because of this, this is why I'm earning this. That's victim mode. That's where you tell me how you view the world. So when I'm having a conversation with you and I ask you that question and you give me all this answer before you answer, you're in victim mode. But we don't realize it because we're so used to being that way. The next way is that we are, you know, we make things happen. But that's why you're exhausted. You're making, you're using your will externally. So here's the law of cause and effect. You're the cause. Everything else is an effect, yeah? But where are you putting your effort? You're here in the effects, making the effects happen. Ah, that's exhausting. That's exhausting. And you know, with the young ones out there, you know, you're going to be like, oh yeah, full of energy. I'm going to make it happen, make it happen, make it happen. And that's great. But just you wait till you get in your 40s and 50s and you're just like, do you know what? You're flipping serious. Like something needs to just happen now. Like this is way too much effort doesn't have to be that effort. When you learn how to use the will internally and be the cause, because you are the cause anyway, but stop messing around in effects. Think of it cause, effect. Why are you in effects trying to change effects? Be the cause. That's the next level. How to view the world is that everything is happening for me. So if I'm the cause and I think in a certain way, then I will start to attract things to me. But here's the thing. You're doing it anyway. You're doing it anyway and the law of cause and effect is where people go whenever things are good yeah I did that I did that yeah that was all me and then when things are bad well it's their fault and they did it and they did it and because of that and because of that that's where I am you can't have it that way it's either one way or the other and it's cause and you're the source of everything, whether you like what I'm saying or not, whether you, do you feel resistance to that? Do you? Do you feel the resistance to looking at things in your life and go, there's no way I brought that on top of myself. There is no way. That's okay. That's okay. Let go of the resistance. Let go of it and just go, well, there's nothing I can do, but what can I do now? Because where you are now is evidence of your past thinking. A diagnosis is evidence of your past thinking, not your prognosis. So diagnose your life now and go, do I like it or do I not? And then ask yourself, well, it is what it is. I can't do anything about it now. So stop fighting it. Stop fighting yourself. And then make a prognosis, right? What do I really 
want. Decide now to go and get it. Yeah, it's time. But remember, while you're pushing forward and pushing forward, it doesn't have to be a push, but I also want you to remember, look how far you've come. Yeah? And if you're hurting right now, I don't know why this is here, but it's opened out this page. So for somebody who's hurting, you know, what do we do when our hearts hurt? Ask the boy. We wrap them up with friendship, share tears and time to, till they make hopeful and happy again. Oh, I can listen. I'm here for you. If you want to chat, you know, you can find my link in the in the um, webinar up there and then we can have a talk after but here's the thing don't don't come and talk if you're not serious about moving forward because if I talk to you while you're there then you pull me into your paradigm you pull me into your programming you pull everybody into your programming and all you do yeah let me tell you problem shared is not a problem halved a problem shared is a problem magnified when you want to talk about problem, 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 then all you do is talk about your paradigm. And you know what you do? You hold it in place. The law of attraction is 16 seconds. And you pull more of that energy into space. So when you come and have a talk with me, we're going to talk about what you want. We're going to talk about your problems. You can give me a, a rough idea, but I don't need to know your problems. Because I know how awesome you are. And your problems are your evidence of past thinking. Why would I want to talk about your past? Why would I need to hear you justify where you are? I know what you're capable of. But when you study with Bob Proctor, you know what you're capable of. You are God's highest form of creation. I know what you're capable of. And your spirit has guided you to listen to me. Your spirit has guided you to go to my webinar. Your spirit has guided you to come on a call with me. Use it wisely. Use it to talk about what you want. Use it to raise your spirit. Yeah? We don't need, to, I don't need to hear your problems. And neither does anybody else. And you know who really doesn't need to hear your problems again? You. Unless you want those problems to carry on tomorrow. Well, then that's okay. Yeah. But do you? Or do you want change? Only you can decide. Decide now is time. There isn't next week. There isn't next month. It doesn't have to be heavy. You don't have to push to get something anymore. You can have what you want, but you've got to break through that wall that you keep banging up against and sucking yourself back in again. Listen, I had a wonderful call with um, a woman yesterday, and this is the fastest it's ever happened. I've normally had results within a day, but this person, she broke through the terror barrier with me, and then it was about half an hour later, she messaged me and something had shifted in her life. <sighs> awesome, because she broke through and she decided enough was enough. Yeah? So... I don't know, maybe your life's perfect anyway. But here's the thing, is that if you stay in the comfort zone too long, in the comfort zone, we're either growing or dying. Comfort is always, it's not even cruising, it means you've decided to stay still. It's the uncomfort where we grow. And here's the thing, fear and growth go hand in hand. But we've been taught to be scared of fear. Fear is our growth. Fear is our evolution. Fear is something seeking to emerge. What is seeking to emerge in you today? If you're afraid, stop stuffing it down. Stuffing it down causes its depression. And then you take on other people's feelings and you depress them as well. Stop depressing yourself. Start expressing yourself. Express the fear. It's coming up to be healed. It's coming up to be loved. Love every part of you. What is seeking to emerge from you today? Get excited about life again. Yeah? Get excited about what's possible. Look at your life now. Is this what you came here for? Or did you come here to live life? I, 
I want to live life more than the first 50 years were just a practice. The next 50 years, I want to show myself how to live because if I'm fulfilled, then I overspill into you. That's why we feel exhausted when we give, 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 because we didn't fill ourselves up first of all. But if we can be fulfilled and enjoy life, wow, we can overflow into other people. So listen, thank you so much for watching. You're all quiet out there. I'm going to have to ask you some questions and just sort of go, give me a wave. Give me a love. Give me a heart. Give me something. If something resonated with you, I don't know, give me something out there. It can be a bit lonely at half five in the morning, although we're a little bit later this morning. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm still going to be here. I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> Have an awesome day. Speak to you soon. Bye.